Joining us on the Informer to talk about the Australian Open, will it happen, won't it happen, is um, a guy that we've known for an awful long time and we, we talk to him time and time again. David Bashir, welcome. Hi George, how are you? Um, uh, is the tennis, uh, the Australian Open tennis going to go ahead? And can you make sense of some of the utterances from all sides, whether you're a tennis player, whether you're a government official, or whether you're a, a member of the umpiring crew? Look, I, I think it's definitely going ahead, George. They've proven they, they can have positive tests during other Grand Slams that it goes ahead. Um, obviously, they've flown a lot of players and officials um, and, and support staff to Australia um, for the Grand Slam to go ahead. It's, it's, it's vital for Victoria. Obviously, it, it's crucial that the, the hotel quarantine works um, to the extent that it didn't during uh, uh, what Victoria had to go and Melbourne had to go through in the past. But I hopefully we've learnt from those lessons. Um, remember, all the positives have come from uh, 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 players and um, and support staff flying in on, on flights. And that's not unusual. There's been, if it was a commercial flight, that's happened before and people have gone into quarantine. It's the way they are treated in quarantine that that's the issue. All these players were informed of this before they went, but I was actually speaking to a, a commentary colleague of mine who was an ex Davis Cup captain, um, and he was privy to the meeting that Craig Tiley had with 500 players uh, a few days ago. And he said Tiley handled himself superbly, he explained the situation, was explained to the players before they came. A lot of it was young players who didn't read the fine print and realise what may happen. Um, I, I think some of these comments were born out of frustration jet lag, expectation, all those things wrapped into one. Um, you know, we're in a global pandemic. Uh, and I think if you look at Australia's record in that respect, the other countries can say, well, we've done it right, and they haven't. Uh, look, it, it never ceases to amaze me uh, when, when you're asked to follow a particular set of uh, protocols, how many are capable of doing it and how, how others choose not to do it. I was at the opening day of the test match, the Boxing Day test match, and I saw a great number of people who wanted to be there do everything right. Um, and I saw them wearing their masks when they went into the shops or into the, uh, the eating venues. Um, they were asked to, uh, to leave a seat and not sit next to one another, and a great many did. And you know what? There are a whole bunch of others who sat uh, you know, against the protocols, who didn't wash their hands, even when they were warned every 15 minutes to follow the messages, follow the, uh, the, the straightforward and simple stuff, and they couldn't even do that. So mm. I, I ask you, we've got, unlike the test match, which went three, four days or five days, um, we've got two weeks. Can we hold it together for long enough to see the tournament actually deliver not only the excitement, but uh, two worthy, sorry, a number of worthy champions because you have a junior champion, you have the women's champion and you have the, the men's champion. Uh, and of course the doubles and so on. Uh, are we going to have two, a two week tournament that we will go, wow, that was special? I, I think we will for the reasons that I think everybody's um, craving for an international event like the Australian Open to give ourselves a, maybe a diversion and prove that in this COVID period, we can host a major event. We can get through the logistical challenges that present themselves with these things, George. And I think it's a fair question, but I think we will. And I've, they've thought this through pretty well. They're going, you can only purchase tickets in zones. So it's either a Rod Laver Arena zone, now uh, John Kane Arena zone or Margaret Court. Yes. Um, there's not going to be wandering around outside courts and so forth. Uh, those days are gone. At the moment, it's, I think it's a third capacity, but that, that depends on community transmissions. And if we get any before the Australian Open, the worst possible scenario is there's an outbreak and they go back to no fans. I don't think that'll happen, but they, you know, they, they've, they've built contingencies around that. At, at the moment, it's a third. They're hoping to get that up to 50% capacity under which you, you're going to have to practice social distancing. If you've noticed the ticketing, uh, they've got family zones and so forth that, 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 that you literally block out rows of seats uh, and, and, and you can social distance. So I think they've gone through all the logistics and they've tried to work it out. Of course, there's going to be issues. We've seen that with, with practice courts and so forth during this challenging time. But overall, remember, the players are playing a Grand Slam tennis tournament. They're privileged to come down and play that. 
and they must realise we're in a global pandemic. A lot of the younger ones haven't. We know tennis players live in a privileged bubble, mm. and we, we heard rumblings of that when they first arrived. But I think now it's simmered down. They've realised they're lucky to be here, albeit they're in, 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 you know, in quarantine hotels, some of which they're saying they're not getting fresh air. Well, you know what? They're still breathing, and they're playing the game they love. So, um, you know, let's celebrate a, a Grand Slam tennis for what it is, which is to be participated, and that's exactly what will happen in Melbourne. Bravo. Um, before I let you go, I've got to ask, one of the great attractions of the Australian Open has it been almost from day one, the ability to, for fans to come in and to wander through what is becoming uh, and has transformed into a quite simply a magnificent precinct dedicated to the game. Uh, we're going to miss some of that, aren't we? It can't possibly be open to, you know, the world, can it? No, it can't, George. And, and that's that's the reality of the situation. We saw that that happened at the French Open with sparse crowds at, at Roland Garros and the US Open, very, very similar. You know, and, no, a, and no Wimbledon. Exactly. And it was an eerie feeling, wasn't it? Yeah. Remember when Dominic uh, team won his uh, first Grand Slam against Zverev in the final? And there were literally just coaches and media in the stadium. Uh, it's just an amazing feeling. But guess what? That's that's the times we live in, and I think we should just we should embrace seeing top level sport, and maybe athletes overcoming adversity because that's exactly what sports about, isn't it? Absolutely. Overcoming adversity. Yeah. So let's hope we have a great Australian Open. Remember, from an Australian point of view, we've got Ash Barty who didn't play in 2020, missed her defence of the French Open. She's raring to go. We've got uh, obviously um, a Alex Dimino, who won a recent title in Turkey, albeit that his opponent uh, uh, was injured in the final, but he got there and he's our top ranked Australian. Who who knows what to expect from Nick Kyrgios? We're going to obviously get excitement in social media and so forth. Let's ho hope we get a bit of excitement on the court as well. But George, I'm looking forward to, I'm going to be commentating for a, a global world fee, which I'm really excited about with guys like John Fitzgerald and, and, and my cousin, Roger Rashi, which are threatening to put me in commentary with him. <laughs> Who knows? But let's, let's see how it goes. But uh, always a pleasure to talk tennis with you and, and any sport, football or any sport. Uh, David Bashir, I look forward to catching up with you real soon. Thank you once again for giving us a, a bit of a preview about what we might be able to expect. But no doubt about it, the Australian Open is one of the great grand slams of the world. And bring it on. Absolutely. Thank you, mate.